Question 8 asks us to draw the products from S3-chloro-3-methyl octane. So let's try to draw that now. Starting backwards, we write the octane. And I'm supposed to, at carbon 3 here, put a chloro group and a methyl group. Now I'm just going to guess um, as to the positions of these, and then I'll figure it out and I'll switch it if I'm wrong. So chlorine has the highest priority. This is the lowest. Next and next. This looks like one, two, three clockwise. So that's going to be R. Whoops, let me switch that around. There's no real other way to do this. So I'll change that to a dash and I'll change this methyl group to a wedge. And now that is the S isomer. Now, when you look at this, there's no strong nucleophile. Acetic acid is um, this molecule here. And there's no solvent listed. So this is going to perform what's called solvolysis. And we're going to get an SN1 process. And we're going to get uh, retention and inversion. We're going to form a racemic product, okay? So that means you get two products. One of them is going to have the um, acetate going pack. And one of them is going to have the acetate coming forwards. Okay, and of course HCl is lost in this chemical uh, reaction. So uh, yeah, that's how you figure this out. Um, some of it's going to be um, S and some of it's going to be R. And remember, uh, racemic means 50% of the S and 50% of the R. So whenever you have a tertiary alkyl halide and you have a, a polar protic solvent and especially no known nucleophile or the nucleophile is the solvent that's going to be SN1 and so that's what you need to draw a carbocation intermediate is completely planar and so it's going to give you 50% S and 50% R uh, thanks for watching this